I recently saw a tweet in which Autodesk talks about Fusion 360's ability to manipulate STLs and meshes. So in this video, I'm gonna have a play with it and see what I can come up with. Regular watchers of the channel will know that I do quite a bit of casting in polyurethane resin and my molds are getting a bit tired now. So I'm gonna use the STL editing capabilities to create a new mold so I can carry on casting. For the uninitiated, an STL or stereolithography file is the main format for 3D printing and it's very different to solid geometry. It's actually made up of a bunch of tessellated triangles and various polygons that are stitched together to create a surface and they're not really very editable compared to the solid geometry that you get from something like SolidWorks or Fusion 360. Now the tweet that I saw the other day suggested that I could very easily combine the STLs with solid geometry and that sounds perfect because what I had been doing is using Tinkercad um, Tinkercad is fantastic, it's used a lot in the education space. I used it when I was teaching at a college, or when I had uh, younger students come in. And I tried doing a little um, STL solid body mashup here. And it's definitely possible to do it in Tinkercad, but after putting a few hundreds, if not thousands of hours into SolidWorks and Fusion 360 recently, I got really quite annoyed with Tinkercad, which is, you know, I'm, I'm making it do things that it's difficult to do, it's more of a creative space than lining up geometry. So Fusion 360 to the rescue. They've got, once you enable um, the mesh space down here in the preview, uh, mesh workspace, we can import an STL. So down here we create a mesh, create insert mesh, I'll insert my desert. And what we'll need to do is align it to the various faces that we need, the various planes. So I'm going to bring it down to 90 degrees. I'm going to center it and I'm going to move it to ground. Now, those three things I did very quickly are really difficult in a lot of um, packages. So that is an absolute turn up for the books. Now, this is a fairly robust STL. There's no holes in it. Quite often you'll have missing faces and inverted faces, things of that nature. I've repaired this at various points. So with Fusion 360, in some of the other videos I've done, you'll know that there are different uh, spaces or workspaces that you can be in. So I'm going to hop over to the model space and using the view cube at the top, I'm going to go to the bottom plane, create a new sketch, I can see for circle on the base face. I'm going to throw in a circle of 110 mil diameter, D for dimension. And extrude that out and as soon as I'm going to be 3d printing this there's absolutely no sense in having it very thick so two mil is going to be absolutely fine and then I'm going to create a further sketch on the top of this new body in the center and this is why centering the STL was a really good idea so one circle there another circle here and we'll dimension that one up we'll give it two mil wall thickness and we'll extrude that up. Now we don't want to go too deep because uh, that will involve using a lot of silicon. So I will extrude just this area to a distance of say, what well, looks about right. Don't want to go too thin because then the mold will be flimsy and the silicon will tear over time. So I think, I think 25 mil gives us plenty there. I've now created a body in this tree on the side. So this is a function whereby I can create um, the Repta mesh. I can take a solid body, preview it, that looks sensible. So it looks like the problem I'm having at the moment is I've got a mesh body here and a mesh body there. So you would have thought that in the mesh workspace um, you could easily combine those. So let's try and merge bodies. And yet the bodies don't show up. So after having a little bit of a look in the help, apparently you can have another workspace where if you don't capture the design history, the parametrics down here at the bottom, click continue, we should get a mesh workspace. There it is. Modify, merge bodies, this one and that one. Two selected, click. Okay, we get mesh body four, which seems to be a unified one. 
So we'll try saving that as an STL. And there we have it. After some amount of faffing around, we've managed to get, finally get it to export. We've got a, an empty mold um, ready to be 3D printed. I'm going to pour it in here and then we'll be able to extract silicon and we'll have a fresh mold. And I'll do that in next Wednesday's video. So I hope this was in some way useful and we'll see you next time. Like these videos, do like, subscribe and comment and let me know how you've been getting on with the STL functions in Fusion 360 and if you've got any tips for me. Thanks again.